Hey, Bujo Bandits, what's going on? Uh, this is Brian Hazard, and I am bringing you a review, a video review of the Bullet Journal Companion for Android. This whole thing is going to be in portrait mode because that's the way that the app runs. But I wanted you to see what's available in the Android version of the app since it's a little bit different than the iPhone version. What you're looking at here is the main screen when you open the app. I just noticed now, after it hit 6 o'clock, that the background changed to an evening motif. So that's kind of cool. I think this, I've never noticed this, even though I've been using it for half a year, uh, that the, it actually changes the background based on the time of day. You'll see that there are four sections, reflections, articles, guide, and log. For the sake of this, in order to make it all make sense, we're going to start with the log. And I'm going to tap on that here, and you'll see that... This is where the app gives you a place to log things when you don't have your bullet journal with you. And people have asked for an app for that very purpose for a long time from Ryder. They said, you know, make something for our phone so we can bullet journal on there. However, Ryder is very keen on the idea of bullet journaling being an analog solution to in a digital world. Therefore, the app does not allow you to just you know, use it as a bullet journal instead. And what happens is you'll notice over on the right side of all of these uh, items that there is a little hour countdown. It says 71 hours. Every time you put an item in this app, you have a 72 hour countdown before the app will automatically delete it. Now, some people have said, oh, I don't like that. That's no good. However, the, the idea behind the bullet journal system, and this, this app is specifically intended for people who use the bullet journal system, not just the, the concept of a bullet journal, is that you should be reflecting on your bullet journal at least once a day, ideally twice. So two times a day, this app is gonna remind you to reflect, and those are the opportunities to go in here and move these things out of the log. You'll see at the bottom of the screen, you have an option to make tasks, notes, or events. For events, you can, if you slide things to the right, like this, you'll see that it can turn that from an event to a migration uh, icon and the same thing for notes you can turn that into a migration icon for a task you can actually migrate or mark it as done which you could do if you actually complete the task before you migrate it into your bullet journal honestly i like writing down stuff even after i've done it i want to be able to write it in my bullet journal so i can see that i got it done it's like a little little extra dopamine hit so I will still move it over and then mark it as done. Personally, I never ever use this feature where you can change the icons. I just never do it. Once I migrate things into my uh, actual bullet journal, uh, I delete them from the phone. And you can do that just by swiping a little bit to the left and then tapping on that icon right there and then it's gone. I have had one, maybe two things get deleted on me uh, by the app because I waited too long to go in and look, like over a weekend. I, I did not like that, but it was also not something that I blamed the app for because I was the one that was not following the system. And this, it's, it's in a built-in accountability system. The idea is to keep us accountable. So I didn't mind that. I liked it. All right, let's go over here. Now that we've looked at the log, I want to show you the reflection uh, system that's built in. So when you tap on reflection, the first thing it's going to do is show you all of your entries that you have in your log. Like I said, the whole purpose of reflecting is to get this stuff into your book. Once you've moved these things into your book like this, you can hit done and it will show you your, uh, your calendar. Now, if I had not done my reflection yet, then it would have uh, moved, made a little hash mark. You'll see that it's got a dot above the 12 for today. And it would have made this lovely, like, scratchy pencil noise, which is great. Uh, I wish I could play it for you now, but I really like the noise. It's very satisfying. And you'll see that there's a spot for every day of the month. Now, it's not an actual calendar. It's just a bunch of blocks that so shows every day of the month. And each time you migrate, if you do it, you know, for two days, you'll see, I'll put my face right next to this guy. See that one right there, that guy? I don't think you can see me when I tap. Uh, that one I did two times a day. I usually only reflect in the morning. I don't usually reflect at night because I stay up too late and I'm too busy bouncing around and whatnot. Down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see how many hours until the next time you're going to reflect. How does it know that? I'm so glad you asked. If you click on the right corner up at the top, you'll see that you have work days and play days. So for your work days, you can set two alarms, one in the morning, one in the evening, for it to set off a reminder for you to do your reflection. And if you tap on the notification up at the top of the screen, like pull down your thingamajigger there and tap on it right there, and then it'll bring you to your reflection screen and let you go through the whole uh, prospect of doing it. And then you can have a weekend or a 
play day, as they're calling it, because not everybody uses a weekend, right? Smart. And then you can have a totally different set of alarms for the weekend. Like, I don't want my alarm to go off until 9 o'clock in the morning on weekdays because I like to sleep in a little bit. So I have it at a different time there. So you can set those, and then an alarm will go off and tell you when to do your reflections. Down here at the bottom of the screen, there is a guide that tells you why you should reflect and the value of doing it. This is available on the website as well. Okay, let's go back to the main menu. So now we've got uh, the next one I'm going to hit is guide. And when you go in here, this is literally, uh, it's neat that they're available in the app. And I've read every ver one of these in here, but it it is really just a watered down version of all of the articles that are on the website. So you could, you could arguably just go to the website. If you go to the bottom, it'll show you, then you can click on that. It'll bring you to the next thing that you can read about. So it's not bad. I mean, you have it on hand. Maybe that means you'll be more likely to look at it and refer to it. I guess that's true, because admittedly, I have looked at all of these. And it even tells you how to do migration. What's cool is at the end of the month, and I can't show you this, but at the end of the month, it will uh, it'll actually, when you go to reflect for the last time for the month, it will give you a little list, a little to-do list of these are the things you need to do to, ref to migrate to your next month. Have you done that? And then you can like tell it that you have. So that's cool. And then the article section, again, these are just sort of uh, local available versions of the blog entries off of the official bullet journal website. And it's nowhere near as good because it, it doesn't have the pictures. It, I, this, If I was going to read the blog, I would definitely just go to the blog. It's one thing to look at the guide entries, which you don't necessarily need all that much as far as you know references. But this is this is not that useful to me. So that's everything. I mean, you have the help thing down here at the bottom. It's funny because after all of that local stuff, you hit on the um, if you hit on the knowledge base, that brings you to the website. If you hit on newsletter, that brings you to the website. Uh, if you hit on contact, apparently I can contact them using uh, Gmail or you know PayPal. Sure. Then you've got credits for who did what and who made the sounds and who made the thing. Uh, libraries. Actually, I'm about to bring up libraries because that's the one thing that this version of the app uh, does not have. So, oh, and you can do your like tweeting and Facebooking up there at the top. The iPhone version of this app includes a, a an, an item called libraries where it allows you to take a picture of the index of your bullet journal when you're done with it. So you have like a running library of indexes so you can look things up in there. It's neat. It's a neat idea. I don't think it's as good as um, you know other available options. Now, mind you, the, let me say this. The reason I like the Bullet Journal Companion app is because it's a one-stop shop for most of what I want an app to do for me in regards to my bullet journaling. You could argue that I could just set alarms on my phone to remind me to uh, to reflect in the morning and evening. You could argue that I could just use Evernote or Todoist or you know, OneNote or the Note app in your phone or a piece of paper to log things when I don't have my book with me. But I like that all it does it all in one place. And really, part of the reason I like the reflection is because it's got the little habit. It's like a habit tracker, right? We like habit trackers. And so it lets you use like a habit tracker to keep track of how good you've been doing about reflecting. And then it'll tell you like, hey, man, good job. You did whatever. Like, I think I've got what here, 10, 11 reflections uh, for the month. Uh, yeah, I got 11 reflections for the month, and it'll tell me that, and that's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, the other downside to the app, the, arguably, I do not agree with this, but some people will say the part of the problem with the app is that it's too expensive because the app, I think, costs either $3.99 or $4.99 in the Google Play Store. I completely disagree with this. I think that the idea that a phone app becomes expensive once it hits the $4 mark is insane. That is that is that is a cheeseburger. That's not even a cheeseburger at some restaurants. That's maybe two McDonald's cheeseburgers. And for a piece of software that you're going to use every single day that improves your life, four dollars is nothing. I mean, we buy kitchen gadgets and bags of chips. That's that's two bags of chips for Pete's sake. Four dollars. It's just not. It's not that much money. And I do think it's absolutely worth it if it's something that you're going to use on a regular basis. That being said. Uh, I just finished saying that I like it because it's one-stop shop, and I said that the and the iPhone version has the library feature. And even though I like the idea of it being a one-stop shop, and the library feature then gives you a place to look at your indexes, 
I use a I use a note in Evernote that I call my bullet journal master index and I use that to keep track of uh, everything important that I think I'm going to need to refer back to at any given time and I want to show you what that looks like let's go right uh, yeah here so this is my bullet journal master index and you'll see uh, this would look a little better on a computer screen I don't usually use it on my phone but you'll see I have a topic and then it shows which bullet journal and which page in that bullet journal. So if I have something that spans multiple journals like my ADHD coaching notes, you'll see that's in bullet journal one and two and there's the page numbers for all the places I can find it. And then I like to have a place for the, the year and then the months within that year and it'll tell me which journal, which page. And it's just a great place. I don't necessarily put every single thing in here but anything I think I might ever have to refer back to or that I wanna find then I will use this as a place to um, to include that. So that's what I use for my you know master index or whatnot. Anyways, that's it. My review of the Bullet Journal Companion is that I like it very much. It is very stable. It has never crashed. It has never had a bug. Although admittedly, we just saw one, right? Because when I went to go, uh, for some reason, AM just floats down here by the 930, even though I clearly have it set to PM. Uh, what happens if I set it to, to AM? Oh, and then it goes away. All right, so it's got one bug. <laughs> That's the one bug in the whole thing that I've ever found. And I just found it with you right now on camera. You saw it here first, folks. Uh, I like it. I use it every single day. I like that it forces me to migrate. I like that it uh, sort of has it all in one place. And it makes me feel like more involved in my bullet journal that I'm using like the official bullet journal companion app. If you are a fair weather bullet journaler, if you are someone who's not necessarily following writer's system, this might not be for you. If you think it's possible that you're going to go 72 hours without looking at your bullet journal, then... Uh, and you don't trust that, you'll look at it in that time, then maybe this isn't for you because it will erase your stuff in 72 hours. I don't want to go 72 hours without looking at my bullet journal. I feel like I am not really in the driver's seat of my world if, if I go that long without using it. So for me, not a problem. Anyways, I've gone on long enough. I hope this was helpful to somebody. I'm going to post it in the Minimalist Bullet Journal group on Facebook because that's the best uh, Facebook group for Bujos ever anywhere in the whole history of the world. Just saying. And then I will put it on YouTube. So if there's someone who isn't fortunate enough to be a part of that awesome group and you want to show them this or if somebody else wants to look at it, then uh, they can find it there as well. Please leave comments. Let me know what you think. I'll see if I can also include an, a link to the Google Play Store listing for this. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys around. Peace.